we do a lot of proactive thinking of governance structures that we should put in place that's going to be resilient, or we let the vacuum be created and we see what governance structure is pulled into it. You do a lot of thinking of full on crypto economic design, right? You try to think of the, how the whole economy pulls together. That mm -hmm. kind of feels a little bit more of this proactive thinking approach. Do you think that's mm -hmm. the same approach we should be taking actively what governance structure we need or let the power vacuum fill it? I'm inclined to say that in the case of protocols, the reactive approach is better. Um, just uh, because uh, in the, the problem with these proactive approaches is that basically like if you do them wrong, then they just end up leading to fairly horrible results. And so it's better to kind of try them at small scales first. Um, and the benefit of uh, kind of starting from where we are today and going incrementally from there is basically that there is a kind of a lot of Im a kind of embedded local knowledge in the Ethereum ecosystem on uh, kind of what approaches make sense, kind of what needs to be argue, uh, uh, actually argued about, what doesn't, uh, who should be in involved in making decisions and so forth, uh, can be uh, kind of maintained um, instead of needing to uh, kind of explicitly write that out from scratch, because often like there is a lot of good insights people have that can't be explicitly written out. Um, I guess like and there's a lot of uh, kind of subtle examples of this, right? Like one just an example is um, the divide between what is allowed to be a just like technocratic decision between five people and what needs wide uh, kind of community input, right? Like there's clearly things that belong in both categories. And so like, you know, De various details of you know, like snappy compression protocols clearly belong in the first category, whereas like issuance rates belong in the second, and there's a big gray area in the middle. And like, how do like how would something uh, kind of as complex as that even necessarily be formalized? Whereas you know, if you take the current approach, you can start from a position that already has most of those things, and then you look at like where the problems are and fill them in over time. Yeah, th th that's fair. That is fair. But in order to push back just, just a little bit, um, is that because we understand the protocol? Like we think that the power vacuum could be filled? Like if we're attracting new people to the space, do you think that like, do you think that arguments say as new people come to the space, we need to show them how decisions are made? Hmm. And that, that's definitely a good argument, uh, kind of in favor of the form, more formalized approach that it's... Uh, kind of easier to explain to newer people coming in, like what's going on and uh, where the decision making is happening. Um, I guess that sort of thing uh, would, well, the challenge, I guess, is that there's little value in making the governance style like extremely accessible if um, at the same time, the technical knowledge needed to actually make useful decisions continues not, and continues to not be accessible. Um, and so, you know, like, would that even lead to a you know, like reduction in quality of decision making and uh, potentially? So, it's the sort of thing where, and I think, like, in the long term, you clearly wants to move toward that. Um, but, um, like, how to get from here to there is definitely incrementally, and especially as um, you know, the yeah, Ethereum ecosystem is. Uh, going to be under, like in particular, is going to be undergoing this very rapid transition over the next couple of years as we add, you know, ETH2 and the merge and uh, the like, like client support and sharding and proof of stake and all of these things. But then, you know, after that point, it would turn into a more incremental thing.